So when boys have struggled through a feminised education system, the exam results are published. But they're not really exam results anymore, because the exam-based element has been systematically reduced. We see the same results year on year. Girls are outperforming boys. But England, Wales and Northern Ireland show girls are still doing better than boys. Once again, boys are still lagging behind girls. Girls are still doing better than boys. <laughs> Girls are still getting more A to C grades than boys. Boys still languish over eight percentage points behind girls. Girls are still outperforming boys. I got an A star, an A, a double B, and all the rest of C's. Oh my god! Wait. <laughs> we to go to college and do all the courses I wanted to do. <laughs> but as a boy, statistically, Chris is less likely to succeed. Boys have been falling further behind girls in A-levels every year this decade. But the education system is supporting girls and abandoning boys, so it's no surprise that the exam results show this disparity in achievement. Not only do girls do better at A-levels, they're more likely to sit them in the first place. Most of the reasons why they're underachieving is that the syllabus hasn't been designed for them. The syllabus has, the, the curricula have been designed to cater mainly for female children. And that is, one can see that in so many areas, the element of competition has been removed. And that's probably one of the most important areas. Boys, and indeed men, positively thrive on competition. You can't stop men competing. Men are involved in all sorts of sports, and if they're not playing them, they're watching them. They compete with nature, they climb mountains, they, they sail around the world. Um, they compete in the workplace. Uh, competition is something that men seem to be motivated by, to a very high degree, an extremely high degree, so much so, that it doesn't stop it in childhood. It goes on and on into, the, into adulthood and old age. And what have we done? We've removed it from the classroom. And so one of the main motivators for male children um, has been taken away. That's one reason. Um, another reason is that the way the material is presented, um, for example, in English lessons, um, young children are expected to write about their emotions and their feelings. Um, this is something that uh, girls seem to be quite happy to do and are interested in doing. Boys have very little interest in uh, thinking about their own feelings and certainly have no interest in writing about them. The Chief Inspector of Schools in England, David Bell, says that even though girls are ahead of boys in exam results, they still need more encouragement. He says that Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a good role model for girls. If girls could learn from her example, they could overcome the glass ceiling and do as well at work as they do in schools. And the exams are beginning to mean less and less as the feminising of our education system suppresses real achievement. 96% passed the exams with over 22% getting A grades. You can see a clue as to what's going on by this student's particularly insightful comment. I got five A's. Um, what do you think about the, the idea that the exams are getting easier? It's easy if you follow the system, but um, otherwise it's pretty tough. As he says, if you follow the system, you can do very well. That's what feminised education is all about. The girls plod through all the coursework, tick all the boxes, and hand in all the assignments on time. You don't need any real ability to do well. You just need to follow the formula that's deliberately designed for girls. Those boys that can adjust to the female bias can still do well. Most, however, turn away. The way in which the children are examined, continuous assessment, is uh, far more attuned to those who have the docile consistency to produce the work week by week by week. The way they're having to do the work is there is not there is a lot more ordered writing that needs to be done in order to compute even the simplest of sums and as a consequence boys with their untidy writing they're less concerned with detail are far more likely to make mistakes girls however far more meticulous in carrying out these procedures uh, benefit from them and this seems to be applying right across the curriculum this is why employers are finding that GCSEs don't mean much anymore they reward plodding mentality and not real ability. Generally speaking, the GCSE qualification is, is no longer a guarantee to an employer that the, uh, that the employee is going to meet the grade. The instant death exam suited boys, you know, they were the risk takers, so they would tend to outperform girls on, a, on a, just a straightforward written exam without coursework. Um, but then when it comes to coursework, um, it, it, it's better, you know, girls operate better in that sort of sphere. More girls are sitting GCSE exams than boys. Many boys never actually get to sit GCSEs, as they're excluded for misbehaviour. Recently in Scotland, they did a survey into what's going on in classrooms, because again, you get this image all the time that boys are out of control 
and they're skiving off this, that and the other, they actually found that girls were equally out of control in the classrooms and they found that the girls were, were more likely to actually skive off school than boys but when it came to exclusion from school, foot boys were four times more likely to be excluded than girls. Again, because of this perception, boys are the problem. Because girls then go on to take up more and more A-level and degree places, the subjects studied are changing as well. Girls avoid the hard sciences and maths and opt for subjects that interest them more. In my maths A-level course, there were no girls in the class. And in physics, there was a single female. Well, another trend from the results is the drop in students wanting to study science. Apparently, they think it's too hard. The number sitting physics, for instance, has dropped. It is very concerning that we've seen very sharp drops in the numbers of people who are studying foreign languages, who are studying computer science, who are studying all science subjects. In some cases, a drop of 50% or more in the last 10 years. They're opting instead for media studies and psychology. I want to continue dance because I think that's like probably my favourite subject. Between them, this group has 23 A or AS level qualifications, but only one in physics, and no one fancies it as a career. There didn't seem to be any point to what I was learning. There didn't seem like a kind of an outcome that was kind of relevant to me at all. Um, I just didn't find it interesting. People assume that they'll go for um, creative things like, like dance and stuff, because they assume that it's the easy option. Why not? Uh, too hard. <laughs> I knew I'd fail it, so I'll take the easy option. Women now take up the majority of university places, and this is increasing year on year. But women don't like chemistry, or physics, or maths, or computing, because those subjects are too demanding. Women prefer the humanities and soft sciences, like psychology. Schools and colleges therefore have to devote more resources to the subjects that girls choose. The consequences of this discrimination against men are already becoming apparent. The study of chemistry is in crisis. The number of university chemistry departments has dropped by more than a third in just 10 years. And in the last eight years, the number of chemistry students has fallen by 25%. We don't get enough money for the teaching and the research that we do, and we couldn't get enough well-qualified students. The future lies with these youngsters. The government has promised more money for science, but unless they can be convinced it matters, chemistry itself may gradually dissolve before our very eyes. The BBC presents this story as an issue of funding, and as is typical, goes out of its way to show female chemistry students on camera, even though they're very hard to find. But the problem with chemistry isn't directly about money. It's an issue born out of the discrimination against men in education. Psychology, it's one of the big threats to chemistry. Gemma Wright, typical of thousands opting for a subject they perceive as easier and more useful. Now, for every chemist, we're training five psychologists. It's a lot more people-centred. Um, there's a lot more advertisements and publicity going around about psychology. Um, it's sort of a more modern and um, up-to-date subject. And that attitude so worries senior scientists, they're now launching a campaign to save chemistry. Those women that are encouraged onto real science courses at the expense of men tend to drop out and switch courses away from science because they find them too difficult. As a result, there are fewer students on science courses and universities have to close departments for lack of funds. Now there's a crisis in chemistry and the BBC just can't explain it. But it really isn't rocket science. Even though girls choose not to study maths, just as they choose not to study science, they're increasingly been encouraged onto maths courses to counter perceived discrimination against girls in this area. The way this is being done is to make the classes easier. Maths courses over the last 30 years have been modified in order to assist girls into higher education. Maths has been dumbed down. Yet each year, many university maths and physics departments report that fewer students have the basic skills needed for study. Since 1979, York University Physics Department has given its first-year students the same test. Year on year, the marks out of 50 have got worse and worse. In fact, Imperial is having to introduce remedial maths because they say the maths A-level curriculum is too easy. Questions that... 30 years ago would have been given to 15 to 16 year olds for the old O level. Um, furthermore, often the old O level questions are harder than new A level questions because the new A level questions liberally use diagrams and frequently, if not always, work the student through in a variety of little stages or steps. They will always work the student through. This is the world of feminized education. Simplified maths with lots of pictures so that girls can do it too. The problem is that when maths is made easy enough for girls, it's no longer of any value. 
there are many areas of maths where they uh, have a knowledge of the, uh, of the subject and they can follow a particular uh, task through, provided it's presented step by step very clearly to them and any problems follow exactly the steps that they've seen. But they have a serious difficulty, in, in, in our opinion, uh, if they are given any genuine sort of problems to solve. If someone to explain to me what all these mathematical equations mean, who can do that? He's asking the right people. This is a summer school for gifted youngsters taking place at Imperial College in London. The gifted pupils at this event are all boys. You can tell that they must be all boys, because if there were any girls, they'd be the only ones on screen. Men are the geniuses that take us the next step forward in life, in science, in sport, in any field of endeavour. If we persist in dressing up females as being more capable than they are, if we continue denying boys a proper education, if we go on simplifying tuition to cater to female abilities, we're heading for a future where every aspect of humanity will be damaged, every achievement dulled. Girls are not smarter than boys, and never have been. Every single industry and vital job on the planet is done best by men. Look around you. The internet, TV, car, music, aircraft, phone, even the clothes you wear, the bed you sleep in and the roads you use. Everything worthwhile on this planet is conceived, designed and built by men. Even products exclusively for women, makeup, bras, high heels, dresses, are designed best by men. This world needs boys and men that are properly educated. The world depends on men in a way it doesn't depend on women. As the saying goes, men build, women decorate. When we properly educate a girl, it's likely that she'll do well in life, she'll contribute to society and she'll achieve her full potential. When we properly educate a boy, he might change the world.